Terrorism has one goal, and one goal only. <clears throat> to destroy freedom, to destroy a sense of freedom, to destroy physical freedom, to destroy liberty. That is the only goal of terrorism. Terrorism is a tool. The tool of terrorism is used by either factions or by governments. It is demonstrably provable that almost every terrorist faction on the face of this planet has been created either directly by or indirectly by American influence in these nations that harbor these terrorist organizations. The tactic of counterterrorism in all of its forms and subtleties, especially in the mainstream media, the propaganda arm of this, of this country and of this government, counterterrorism is by extension another form of terror, creating fear and instilling fear into the minds of citizens of a nation is terror. By telling you that at any given moment, on any given day, in any given month or year, that an attack could occur because the quote-unquote fight or war against terrorism is faceless, whether or not, whether or not any given attack or specific attack warned to you by your media, by your counter-terrorism task force bureaucracies in this country, is creating terror. If the goal of terror is to destroy freedom, then I can assure you that just as you heard it yourselves from the pundits' mouths, from the horses' mouths, for months and even years after the 9-11 attacks, that they did it because they hate our freedom, then you must understand two things. Number one, we the citizens, we the people, had nothing to do with, these, with those attacks. And number two, it was not Osama bin Laden that passed the Patriot Act. It was not bin Laden that set up the TSA, the NDAA, SOPA, or ACTA. Therefore, if the people have to experience the brunt of such attacks, then it is the government themselves who are acting the part of terrorists. The Patriot Act serves to only take away freedom. So does the NDAA. So does ACTA, SOPA, and the TSA. I ask you who are the real terrorists. There's only one goal to terrorism. The destruction of freedom. Good evening, folks. Italian lad, 6'9". It's February 23rd.
This month's edition of the Chicago Reader, which is a free magazine, free newspaper, has an article that is titled, Your NATO G8 Primer. It consists of a three, four page long article that is formatted in the form of a Q&A between the journalists and various public officials, aldermen, etc. I'm quoting a question and an answer here in regards to the G8 and NATO summits is set to arrive in Chicago within months. It reads, so this decision was made completely free of politics, right? Well, unofficially, Mayor Rahm Emanuel really, really wanted the summits to come here to the city. As he's told his aides, it's like the Olympics, only easier to get. So he was badgering the president. He was badgering the vice president and other administration officials about bringing the summits here almost from the moment he won the mayoral election last February. And I'm quoting here, and maybe even before. Now, Rahm never let a crisis go to waste. Emmanuel <clears throat> with all the strings, I have no doubt, that were pulled to get him into the office of mayor in the city. Really has no official business requesting from the executive branch that the city of Chicago be the host of the summits. The only reason he would request, would make that request, was, would be because he wanted to host the summits, and thereby extension the city of Chicago. Now, I just read to you, It is very likely that he had requested the summits be hosted here even before the mayoral election last February. an article by the Times Standard that was published and posted February the 15th reads, Chicago is asked not to stifle wireless communication during the summits. Pay attention here. Chicago. Protesters will be flocking to Chicago for May's G8 NATO summits armed with smartphones, video cameras, and links to social media sites they'll use for strategizing and sharing images of what's happening right in front of a police force known for responding with tough tactics. Now a city councilman wants to forbid the police department from pulling the plug on the electronic communication during the events, taking away a tactic employed by authorities during a crackdown on democratic protests in Egypt and during protests in the San Francisco Bay area last year. In just those two paragraphs that I read, what do you take away from that? There's only one thing that you should have taken away from those first two paragraphs, and it should have hit you immediately. This is one of only a handful of articles covering this topic that were published and the way that the article was written, 
suggests that the decision to walk into cell towers, flipping the switch, and turning off cell phones during the summits was already made. This article is written in a way that promotes the idea of one alderman and his his um, uh, dissatisfaction or, or dislike of this of this uh, situation. The decision was already made, and you know this is only one man speaking out against it. That is the utter contempt that city officials have for the citizens. Because any attempt to, to report on the fact that our cell phones might be turned off in I don't know how wide of an area during the summits, the first and only mention is in an article written about a guy who opposes it, an alderman. On February 17th, the Chicago Tribune. Secret Service wants boats away from the summit. Craft will be cleared out of Burnham Harbor for the meetings at nearby McCormick Place. When it's your job to consider the total environment of the city of Chicago in an effort to make the upcoming G8 NATO summit secure, there's a lot to think about. When I looked at a global picture of this and I'm quoting here, I saw a lot of boats, said Frank Benedetto, head of the U.S. Secret Service in Chicago, who is relatively new in town. Quote, talking to a lot of people here, a lot of people who have those boats, they don't really care about the NATO G8. They want to go on their boats on a beautiful weekend in May. However, coming the 19th of that month, they'll care too. As Benedetto said, pleasure craft will be cleared out of Burnham Harbor for the meetings of world leaders at the nearby McCormick Place Convention Center. In the previous video that I uploaded on YouTube, I covered uh, a Sun Times article, which was one of the first, if not the first, I could be wrong, definitely one of the first articles written about the subject. It was only a one-page, two-page article where I had covered all of these police state measures that they are setting up in this city. Everything from curfews to beaches and parks being closed, hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent on new equipment for the police department, from helmets, face shields, shields, body length shields, vests, bulletproof vests, the fact that there will be thousands of jackboots on the ground during the summits that make up the FBI, the Secret Service, the ATF, and the DEA, and a whole plethora of, of other draconian measure, uh, measures that are put in place to deal with protesters. Protesters. Now, they're not saying it, but what it really seems like they're doing, and after having read all of this, I've got a little more to cover here, but so far, having already read all of this, you get to a point where you stop and realize that all of this stuff that's being set up to deal with even if even 10 or 20,000 protesters, you, you come to this realization that it starts to ring all too true that this stuff being set up really has nothing to do with the summits themselves at all. <clears throat> 